life. There's no other means except the word. Praise the Lord. You're welcome to the church, to church once again. This is a moment that God is set to do great and mighty things for us. And I'm so careful to release myself before him as well. I told God I don't want to come here to display. God, manifest yourself in your own unique way. Reach out to your people. So if you're still looking at me, I'm the one speaking. I'm not the one speaking. The Holy Ghost has taken over. He has done some things in the spirit concerning you. And I want you to begin to connect to that thing. That this is not a man speaking to you. God himself is reaching out to you this morning. In the name of Jesus. Somebody praise the Lord. Somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Thank you because you are faithful. Thank you because you care for us more than we care for ourselves. Thank you, O oh God, because your eyes are on the sparrow to satisfy us, to bless us beyond expectations. Thank you, Lord, because we know that your spirit is at work in our heart to change and transform us. Your spirit is at work to take us to that place that you have desired for us. Not our will, but yours be done, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, let both the speaker and the hearers be blessed. In Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord, church. So beautiful to be alive. So beautiful to be alive. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. All right, this morning I'll be talking about the topic already. Get your priority right. Get your priority right. It's just the best time of the year to preach this kind of sermon. Don't you think so? This is just the best time of the year. You can't be preaching this kind of sermon in November. What else do you want to get right? <laughs> because the year has ended. And this is a beautiful new year. And God is setting us on a very good platform. Concerning areas of our lives that we need to get right. The things we need to set right. The foundations that we didn't lay properly in 2019. God is teaching us. He's telling us this is the time for us to set things right. Praise God. Praise God. Every building has a foundation. Isn't it? God is our foundation. How many of us believe that? That God is our foundation. God is our source. He created us. He made us. He knows us. The things that you don't know about yourself, God knows it. So it's important for us to understand that there is always a foundation to everybody's life. Especially when you are now saved. You become his heart's beat. The Bible says he keeps us in the, in, the, in the palm of his hands. He looks at us every day. Praise the Lord. So, we're going to look at the scripture. Third John, chapter, verse 2. Talking about the mindset of God concerning you. A lot of us are, you know, we are alive. We, we, you know, we are expected to do the things that happen or to experience the things going on in the world. Praise God. You're giving birth to, or you gave birth to somebody. And then you expect the life, I mean, life to start normally. Go to school, build your life, go through the school systems, I mean, go for service here, start working, start, you know, the next thing is they want you to get married. Even if you don't want to, they are telling you, you are mess I mean, the next thing is for you to get married. And so we keep chasing success. Praise God. We keep chasing success. I'm trying to paint a picture of what the world calls success to us. Because if we don't know where, I mean, the things that we're doing wrong, you can't correct it. God needs to open our eyes to those things that we need to correct. So we keep chasing all these worldly things. We keep chasing everything they have called life. And so, before we know it, we, we buy in into it. And that changes our orientation. 
that changes our decisions. It changes our actions, the things that we do. So some people, when, you, when people tell you you are not spiritual, and you are wondering, I'm spiritual, but your actions are not showing it. Because there's something wrong with your mindset about the things that you are chasing. If your actions are showing that you are spiritual, then people would definitely say, this guy, I mean, this guy is spiritual. Praise the Lord. Getting your priority right. We have, a lot of us have actually missed it. Even the so-called believers, we have missed it. We are chasing several things outside God. For us as believers, the pattern is this. God is our priority. There's no foundation that can be laid except that which has been laid. And Christ remains our chief cornerstone. That is our foundation. He is our priority. And he has to remain on top of it. Now, I'm not saying don't chase those things. I'm just saying that. You know, like the scripture says in Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all other things shall be added. You know, God is a very good God. He didn't say just seek the kingdom and then, I mean, that's all. He told you. All those things are still coming. But you have to put the first thing first. Seek the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. Let's go to that scripture. Matthew 6, 33. We're going to read in some, in different translations, KJV and TPT. So church, we read together. All right. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. TPT. Do you have it? Oh, you don't have it. I need to look for it here. All right. I'm not sure I have it here. I think it's on my phone. All right. Does anybody have it in church? Can I have that translation, please? TPT translation. Did you get that? Constantly above all. Praise God. Thank you, sir. It says, so above all, constantly chase after the realm of God's kingdom and the, right, and the righteousness that proceeds from him. Then all these less important things, they are less important. Less important. Whatever God calls less important, it is less important. So you can't make those things that God calls less important important. Now, you can't, I mean, you don't have a control over the, I mean, the people in the world. When you see them focusing on the things that are less important, then you don't get carried away because you know who you are. You know who your God is. You know what he expects from you. God says, what I'm telling you is that stop focusing on the things that are less important. Now, you focus on them, but they are not as important as what I'm talking about. Seek ye first, above all. So it's good to chase your academic success. It's good to chase your marital success. And what else do we chase? Sorry, financial success and what else? Career success. Yeah, you want to be at the top of the ladder. Praise the Lord. It's very good. Those things are very good. God is not saying don't do them. But he's saying they are less important. If you are doing them and you are not focusing on God, then you have missed it. Praise God. You have missed it. It's a, it's a clarion call for all of us, including me, as we start the year 2020, to lay the foundation right. Very, very crucial. God wants us to be successful more than the way you desire success. Ah, uh -uh. You think you desire success? The Bible says in 3 John, I mean, 3 John chapter, um, verse 2. Please remind me, I'm guessing. I, I wish above all things. I wish above, above all things, all, all, that you, be, I mean, that you prosper and be in health. So what is your wish? You think your wish is greater than God's wish for you? Do you understand what I'm saying? Please talk to your neighbor. Get it right. Can you tap your neighbor and let him get this message? I wish above all things. 
So what kind of wish do you have that is greater than God's wish for you? Okay? You're going out long hours at work. I do long hours. I do long hours. But that's not God's will for me. It is not God's will for me. I was reading something early this morning. I think I'll need to read it. Please, my phone. Can you help me with my phone? And I felt like sharing to everybody that cares to read this. For you to understand the way God wants us to live our lives. Sorry, I, I switched off my phone. I'll go back to that. God wants us to seek him first. That's God's desire. And do you know why you have to do that? Life is better when we have the right priority. It is far better. Ask those who have sought after other things. They come back to seek God. We know better. We are children of light. And God told me, my children are called the children of light and they live in darkness. What is happening? Where are we getting it wrong? Who is distracting us? Who are those people distracting us? Why are we not getting it? Why do we place other people above God? I was sharing with them in the membership class yesterday. I said, okay, I want to analyze why people tell lies at work, especially when they come late to work, and then they change figure. Let's analyze it. Why do you tell lies? Because eventually you want to tell lies. Maybe you're supposed to resume 7.30, and you got to work 7.15, I mean 55. And you're thinking, oh, I need to change this time. Or I don't even sign at all. That's even worse. That means you didn't even come to work. And I was thinking, okay, let's analyze it. What am I trying to avoid? I'm trying to portray what I'm not. I'm trying to tell people that I'm perfect. I cannot come late. That's it. You're trying to portray to your boss that you are a good staff, that you are perfect. You are, I mean, you're always coming early to work. And the day you miss it, you still want to paint that picture that you are still perfect. You don't want to recognize your weakness. You want to honor your boss more than God. Praise the Lord. And I, and I want us to know today that God is not looking for perfect people. God is looking for people with a perfect heart. God is looking for people, even in their mistakes, they are still real. They are still real with him. Yes, I messed up. Yes, I missed it. I need your help. Because if you keep covering it up, then you don't need help. Nobody will even offer to help you. So you know you are doing yourself a disfavor. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we must understand the fact that we have to put God first. Put God first. In the days of social media, we wake up the next thing we want to put on our phone. Does it happen to you? Or maybe I'm the only real person here. Church, please be real. Does it happen to you? You want to put on your phone. You want to check. In fact, recently I discovered that I want to check pastor's word. And I'm like, I need to even hear God first before pastor's word. Praise God. God's word to me. Don't you guys receive it? I want to know what God has laid on our pastor's heart. And I said, no, let me hear what God has directly for me first. Before I get to start meditating on that. Do you get it? So, I mean, technically, somehow, subtly, we have changed that rank where God is, even as believers. And it's important we get back on track. It's important we realize it, that we can't achieve anything. Whatever you're going to achieve is going to end up in a mess. It is not a curse. You are born of the Spirit. You can't live outside the Spirit. You can't live outside the Spirit of God. That is your source. We have to wake up in the morning and the first thing you are doing is to connect with God. Connect with God. The first thing you are talking with God. Praise the Lord. We are talking about real world where you wake up and maybe there's a noise in your area that woke you up and you are rushing out. But deliberately, this year, Decide to put God first. He controls every other thing. You win with God. You don't lose with him. Put him first. Honor him. He must remain your top priority. Praise the Lord. Why do you also need to make God top priority? 
it will help you overcome all obstacles on your way. You can imagine someone who has heard God about how the day will be. Compared to somebody who has not even heard anything, rushes out to work. I mean, the difference is going to be so clear. God will tell you things that would happen, how you should behave. God is so finicky about a lot of things that we think. You know, God is a father. I don't know. It's, I mean, it's just not, it's not just God, G-O-D, that we call him. He's a father. He relates. God relates. So if you are ready to enter a relationship with him, then you need to relate with him and expect him to relate with you as well. God is a father. Don't treat him like, oh, a deity. Let me just, you know the way they, let me say it in Yoruba, sacrifice, you just do your sacrifice before you go out. Just do the sacrifice. It is compulsory. Before you go out, do it. A lot of us treat God like that. Praise God. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5, it says, trust the Lord with all your heart. With all your heart. There's a requirement. There is a requirement. It has to be whole. If it is not whole, then you are not trusting. Trust the Lord with all your heart. And it will direct your path. Are you looking for direction this year, 2020? Are you looking for how to make that money? How to increase your investment? Now, rates are low. God help you. You put your money in a very bad investment. It's gone. Are you looking for instructions on how to live your life? Praise God. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in me with the whole of your heart. With all, in all your ways, acknowledge me and I will direct your path. That's a covenant. You don't understand the meaning of when God tells you hi. That means I'm entering this covenant with you. This is a covenant. I'm ready to work with you. Just do your part and I will do my part. Do you understand it? A lot of us need to really sit down and meditate on the word. To know that God doesn't speak because he needs to speak. He speaks because he has an intention in mind. He has something to fulfill. So when you hear God's word, somebody gave me a word during the week and she was so feeling afraid to disclose the word. I said, please make it simple. Don't be afraid. Say it. I'm so gracious to be blessed that God is sending the word to me. Do you understand that? In the midst of millions of people, God sent a word to me. It's so important we cherish the word of God. It's so important. So when you value the word of God and it say, I mean, gives you a word, you know God is up to something serious about you. Praise God. Praise God. So God's plan is not to stop us from seeking other goals, but to seek him above all. Don't be obsessed with other concerns. Now, we have other concerns, don't we? You want to, you, you, I mean, you want to go to school, you want to graduate, you want to have your PhD, you want to have other things in life, you want to make money, you want to be financially free, you want to have a good marriage. Those things are very good. They are very, very good. God is interested in your success more than you think. But he's saying, don't be carried away. Don't be carried away. Put the first things first. Tell your neighbor, put the first things first. Say it louder. So what do we call godly success? We're talking about worldly success. It is living for God and providing a godly atmosphere for your family, children, and people around you. When you are living for God, you are fulfilling the purpose and the mind of God. You are putting God first in your life. He's the one orchestrating every step you take. Somebody is saying, invest this. You are saying, no, I've not spoken with God. I've not spoken with my father. 
Somebody is saying stuff and you're like, let me speak with my father before I get back to you. Do you understand that? You are fulfilling the purpose of God because you know for you as a believer, you can't afford to miss it or to mess up your life in, it, I mean, in disobedience. God wants us to provide godly atmosphere for our families. A lot of us, we go out, we ignore our families. We don't pay attention to them. We run elter skelter. May I tell everybody in this house today that after God, your family is the next. May I tell you after today, today I mean, that after God, your family is the next thing. Not your career. Some people even prefer their cars more than their family. Their children dare not go near their vehicles. They dare not touch their phones. Do you understand it? We have to set these things right. You can't have peace with God and with your family members and you will not make progress. You know, they say in Yoruba land, can I say it in Yoruba? Let me say it in Yoruba, please. Maybe the Igbos will come and interpret. This is becoming a, I mean, a kind of, you know, a global church, we said, right? It's still a global church, you know? See, Oh, you don't know it. You guys are generation, what do we call them? M or which alphabet? <laughs> Please, if the enemy in the house does, cannot kill you, the one outside cannot attack you. That is it. So if you're at peace with God and you're at peace with your family, there's no devil that can stop you. There's no devil that can stop you. So if some of us need to go back home and correct that lacuna. We need to go back home and make amends and reconcile with our family members. We need to set things right. Don't lose your destiny because you are chasing career. Don't lose your destiny because you are chasing money. Everybody in Lagos is chasing money and you can see it clearly. Everybody wants to dupe you. Everybody's looking for an avenue to take advantage of you. It's everywhere. And it's, I mean, they do it openly. And you are wondering, what kind of people are this? Money here, money there, money there, money there. Everybody's just, nobody's ready to do anything for free. Even when they are meant to do it for free, they still ask you, please pay something. Can you see how much of the worldly system that has even entered into the Christendom? Are we not the ones in the world? Isn't it? We are the ones in the world. If the world is not changing, then we are not working. If nothing is changing around you, then, I mean, you are not doing anything about your, I mean, about your faith. Praise God. Praise the Lord. So, everybody needs to get it right. 2020 is a year of transformation. Is a year of no boundaries, no limits. Nothing is capable of stopping you except you stop yourself. We need to remind ourselves that because we have been chanting it, no limit, no boundaries, no limits. But if you don't set your house in order, if you don't set your priority right, you will definitely stop what God wants to do. Praise the Lord. This year we must dedicate more time to God. We must dedicate more time to God. Plan it. Be deliberate. Write it on paper. Share that vision with somebody. I want to do this this year. I need you to help me. You have to be deliberate. Even organizations, they put their vision all over their premises. Even their customers must know that vision. You must put your own in writing as well. The Bible says, so that he that reads will run with it. So, how many people should read it? Not, I mean, the reading is not just for you. It's for others to read and help you run with it. So, whatever goal you have in mind this year, you have to write it down. And the top one on the list for us, as God's chamber tribe, 
God's chamber family is to put God first. Make sure you write it down. Paste it all over your house. I'm putting God first this year. Write it on the wall of your kitchen. In front of your car as you are driving, I'm putting God first. Make sure you see it. and Paste it everywhere. Let people know this is my vision for this year. I'm not doing two visions, just one. I tell our governments, please, just give us one. I mean, what do they call it? What, what, what? Uh -huh, agenda. They will write seven. They will write one. They will not do anything. Just do one, one, one. And you will achieve that success. You will achieve it because God wants you to be successful. If you don't put those things in place, there's nothing you chase. I repeat it. There's nothing you chase. It will end up in mess. You will not end up in mess in Jesus' name. I say you will not end up in mess in Jesus' name. Praise God. So you need to change where it's necessary. Change whatever you need to change. This is the time to change. So I, I love new things. I love new day. When there's a new day, a new year, a new season, something new, opportunity to do something again. So please change, change. Be deliberate about this year. Change. That thing you want to do all these years, do it. Get somebody to partner with you. Get a mentor to encourage you. Get a coach. I've been wanted, wanting to do something for years. Please help me. I encourage people in my prayer team to have their accountability partner or a mentor. Get somebody. See, to get to a time in life that you get discouraged about your vision, you can't even carry it through. You need somebody to help you. God has blessed you so much with people. You are just underestimating them. You don't know the power of people. The blessing of God surrounds you every day, but you are not taking advantage of it. You're waiting for that person that looks like it. That person that is bigger than you, that you think you can learn from. People around you, ordinary people, we learn from little, little things that God has blessed us with. Take advantage of people around you. Create that change that you want to see. Create that change that you want to see. You can get there. You can achieve success. That thing you have written down on paper, it's possible for you to achieve it. You know, Wavbeck, Pastor Bill was saying something about, say it, just speak it. Say it, whatever you want to achieve this year. Say it, don't be afraid. Begin to speak. You can have it. You can have it. And that changed my mindset. Because I feel, oh, those big things, like saying Nigeria is going to be free of corruption. Declaring things like that, when you know the states of Nigeria, corruption, that has eaten deep, deep, deep inside the bone. And then you are declaring, that is the kind of declaration God wants us to declare. That's the kind of faith, big faith that God wants us to have. That there's nothing that we imagine to achieve, that we will not achieve it. Praise God. Examine your priorities. Spend time with God. Spend time with your family. Talk about the Hebrew men. They put God first. And you saw what happened. God delivered them. Your deliverance is in putting God first. If the devil has tied you down in the past, when you, start be when you begin to put God first, you begin to see things happening in your life. You begin to see things happening in your life. Sometimes you will feel you need to go on the mountain. It is not about going on the mountain sometimes. It's about you just putting God first. You go on the mountain and somebody, uh, and something else takes over your priority. Where is God in the midst of all this? Where have you put him in the midst of all this? When you rank your, I mean, uh, your list of goals for 2020, and then there's no God inside. Write your goals, financial success, family breakthrough, uh, reconcile with my mommy and daddy. And you put all those things. Uh, make sure my daughter enters university. 
with skinny corn. Hey, hey, I mean, what, I mean, what's the score now? Maybe three hundred something max. And then there's no place for God. I want to spend more time with God this year. I want to chase after Him. I want, I want to chase and long after God. I want to be more present in church. I want to serve God more this year. And God is not asking for too much. He's not. Asking, he's just looking at your heart. He wants, okay, what are the things going on in his heart? God is looking. You know, the Bible says God sees the inward. Men look at the outward. So when some things are not happening in your life, it's because God knows that it's not yet, I mean, at the top of everything about your life. God is not at the top of it. So we need to re-strategize. Can you tell your neighbor? We need to re-strategize. Praise the Lord. Stick with your priority. Stick with it. Don't let the world sweep you off your feet. Tell the world no. Say no to the world and the system of the world. Deliberately this year, say no to the system of the world. If people have been asking you to do the wrong thing, say no to them. They didn't create you. Did they create you? They didn't. So why are you always obeying every? person that pushes you everywhere do this you do you can't say no there's integrity in saying no there's power in saying no you have to use that power this year you have to engage the inner strength that God has given you this year don't just fall for everything stand for something this year stand for something the Lord will help us the Lord will strengthen us But God is waiting for us to make that decision today. Philippians 3.14. I would like us to read that scripture. Philippians 3.14. Okay. Can you go to 11? All right. 11. Okay. Church, let's read. If by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead, not that I have already attained or I'm already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Can I, can I have another trans, maybe message translation? Seems you don't have TPT. Let's do message. All right. I'm off and running and I'm not turning back. Please move. All right. Can we go now? All right. If there was any way to get in on the resurrection from the dead, I wanted to do it. I'm not saying that I have this all together, that I have it made, but I'm well on my way, reaching out for Christ, who has so wondrously reached out for me. Friends, don't get me wrong. By no means do I count myself an expert in all of this, but I've got my eyes on the goal, where God is beckoning us onward to Jesus. I'm off and running, and I'm not turning back. Praise the Lord. Apostle Paul said, I'm off. 2020, we are off. 2020, we are off. We are off all the world system. We are off all the shackles. All the mindset the world has put in us. We are dropping them in the name of Jesus. We are dropping them. We are dropping them. Tell your neighbor, I'm dropping them. Make a covenant with God this morning. I am dropping them. I am dropping them. I have to drop them if I need to make meaningful sense out of my life. Praise God. Let God help you achieve the success he wants for you. He said, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health. Prosperity. God is a God of prosperity. God is not a wretched God. God likes success. God likes to be celebrated. God likes to be praised.
So how come you think he's not interested in your success? Put him in it. Let him help you achieve that success. Unless you make God your priority and preference, above other things, you will find yourself in a mess. That's the message and the summary of what I have to say today. Unless, 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 God is our God. He's a faithful God. He's a just God. He will not bless someone who has kept him as a top priority. You know? And bless the other person too. I know he's a generous God. He's a merciful God. But the blessings will be different. It will be different. It can't be the same. He's a true God. He's a just God. The same way you will be fair when you have to judge a case. It's the same way. God, we also judge some of the things that we do. So there is no magic about success except you place God first. Praise God. Praise God. So I want to move to other areas that we need to focus on so that we can get a balance of this. Um, a lot of times you are, we also, of course, you want to be healthy, you want to have the big money, have the good cars and all. You need to have your goals written down. I'm having a meeting with my accountability partner. We are talking about our goals for 2020. Why did I do that? I felt I could do more this year. I want to do more. So if you are somebody like me that wants to do more, you go after success. Success don't just happen by showing in church. I believe in supernatural miracles, but God has systems that he has put in place for us. Joshua 1.8 says it. Praise the Lord. We must align ourselves to God's way of life. We must align ourselves. List your goals. Identify the most important thing to you that you want to achieve this year. Make it official. Write it down. Get somebody to help you achieve it. Uncover the blind spots. You can not see the totality of the things you want to, you know, some people write things. They don't even understand the, um, the mag, um, magne, sorry. Magnitude, magnitude, yeah, praise God. Magnitude of what they have written down. So their plans are so shallow that they don't understand what's going on. But when you bounce it off someone that would open your eyes to the opportunities in your dream, a lot of people have been blessed supernaturally by that gift. Get your accountability partner. They will help you keep an honest feedback and make you responsible for your actions. Praise God. They keep you motivated and they keep you focused. Do you have anybody you talk to in the house? Maybe somewhere? Somebody you just share your heart with? Does everybody have that? Or you are just doing Lone Ranger? You are walking in, uh, you are walking in life alone. I can do it all by myself. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Even Jesus himself had to be helped at a point in time. You have to acknowledge the gift of men that God has placed around you. Men will make mistakes. That is why they are men. They still have graces, different graces upon their lives that God has, I mean, is going to use to bless you. Praise God. Stick to it. Stay flexible regularly evaluate and evaluate and evaluate your goals i see you get there in the name of jesus i see you get there in the name of jesus i see you achieve that greatness in your heart that purpose that vision that god has given to you i see you achieve it in the name of jesus the hand of god rests upon you to bring to pass all that he has laid on your heart to do this year. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, Our God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good and healing those that were oppressed of the enemy. Because God was with him. I declare that the hand of God rests upon you this year. In the name of Jesus. 
Your hands are blessed. Your businesses are blessed. Your finances are blessed. Your marriages are blessed. Your health is blessed. I decree grace upon grace upon you this year. Grace that will help you and help you to exceed that expectation. In the name of Jesus. Church, rise up and begin to pray. Begin to ask God for help. Begin to ask God for help this morning. Ask him to help you. Ask him to help you. Ask him to help you. Lord, help me to put you first. Open your hearts. Lift up your hands before your maker and ask for grace. Ask for grace this morning. Talk to God from your heart, from the depth of your heart. Talk to him. Connect with him. Tell him your heart desire. Tell him the things that you want to achieve. The things that he actually wants you to achieve. The plan of God for your life is big. You can't afford to, to just put anything on the table. Get God's plan for your life. And allow him bring those things to pass. Talk to God. God, what is your plan for me for 2020? What, do you, what would you have me achieve this year? Open my heart to receive it. Anoint my ears to hear. Bring men and women into my life that will help me achieve those things. Receive grace in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you, Father, because we are made for more this year. We are made for more of you this year. We commit our lives unto you and we pray, oh God, that you help us to keep you as the first in all that we do in the name of Jesus. We receive grace for 2020. Fresh grace for every day. Fresh grace for every season. Fresh grace for every level. Fresh grace for everything that you have to do. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Just celebrate God. Celebrate the ministry of the word. Hallelujah.